Hi everyone and welcome back to Work in Progress Wednesdays. This is series one and this is my antique inspired quilt series and it is featuring the Dresden quilt pattern. So we have our Dresden circles done with all the blades and now we are moving into episode three. So in this episode we're going to be working on the circle centers and um, so basically in this episode we're going to interview different color options for the circle center and look at different ways we can um, hide the raw edges of the circle if you so wish to do so. You could just leave the edges of the circle raw if you want to, but in this one I am definitely going to turn the edges so that if I do need to wash this quilt at some point um, it won't continue to fray. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so first I'm going to show you a few things I'm going to be using in this video just to help me a little bit. Um, first is some regular old freezer paper. This is plastic coated and that is important because we'll be making some circle templates out of this freezer paper. I love doing this because it makes the template nice and firm. If you just um, trace your template on just regular paper, you won't get this nice firm paper, which really is going to come in handy later. You're also, um, if you want to use one of my methods, you're going to need some needles and some thread and definitely some starch. I um, started making my own starch for ironing. Um, and I find that it works a lot better and it doesn't smell as much. So that is something I definitely like since I am constantly um, ironing fabric. Uh, I will post a video soon of um, the recipe that I find that I like a lot when I want a nice heavy starch um, soon. So if you want to see that, be sure you're subscribed to my channel and turn on the notification bell because it definitely is a tried and true recipe. Um, I also have a light starch that I'll share as well. That one is super easy. So, um, so yeah, that's the, some of the things that you will need if you want to. You can purchase um, some great templates, circle templates. Um, here is a, a picture up of a template um, package set that you can purchase. Um, but I really like just making it myself because then you can get the exact size that you're wanting. But um, if you'd prefer to purchase it, those options are available. I'll put a link in the description as well to um, some circles you can purchase. Okay, so the first thing I'd re recommend you doing is going ahead and getting whatever background you're going to use, get them cut to size. So for mine, um, I needed 10 inch squares and I need 12 of them. So get those cut because when you're testing out which um, colors of fabric you want to use for the center circle, it's really important that you see it on the back of, um, on the background that you're going to be using because it'll look completely different. So if you're laying it on a dark surface like your cutting mat or a surface that is completely different color than your background, you may not get a good visual of what it will look like. So go ahead and get it cut. You could also, um, when you're like interviewing your different colors, you could lay them out and take photos. That way you can put it all together at once and like a collage and see how they all look to see if some work well together, um, ones that kind of stand out too much. It'll give you a good idea of, um, if you want to just use one center circle color or multiple center circle colors. So take photos, kind of look at them, maybe sit on it a while if you are unsure and think about it. You don't have to rush through everything. You really want to make sure um, when you're putting the time and effort in a quilt that you like everything that and how it goes together. So um, let's take a look at some of the color options I am thinking about and we can look at what works, seems to work and what doesn't seem to work. All right, so here are the fat quarters that I've been looking at for my center circles. They are solid, and I'm really, 
really positive that I was going to go with solid because I have so much pattern on my Dresden. So I think it'll help kind of, um, one, break up too much, having too much pattern all together, but it'll give a place for the eye to kind of rest because we have the solid background and then we'll have a solid center circle. So let's take a look at how some of these look. So I knew right away that I likely wasn't going to use the really light and the really dark colors. So the really light, I think, kind of blends in too much with the background. The really dark, I was worried that it would become too much of a focus when I really want the petals to stand out a lot. Um, so I'm not going to go with those two. And then I had this really beautiful kind of like a, a brick red and this olive green. And I do think both of the colors are really beautiful. There is a little bit of olive in the petals here, um, but the red, you can't find too much as a highlight. There might be a little bit in the flowers. Um, that it may even be too light, kind of an orange there. Um, you see in this one, there is a little bit of that red here, but there's really not a lot of it. I think they're beautiful colors. I think if I went with them, they would work, but it wasn't quite right, I don't think. So we have a few more here. This blue, I was pretty sure I might really want to go with it. I love blues. I lean toward blues a lot. Um, but I felt like maybe it would pull too much into these blues that are already standing out. Um, wasn't too sure about it. This orange I loved right away. It's here in this petal, it's here, um, but it doesn't take over too much. It kind of really just accentuates the colors in the block and the same with this lighter yellow. So I think these are gonna be my two center circles. And um, I think I decided that I probably will go with two and alternate them. I can get them all made. And if I feel like I should have chosen just one, um, you know, get some more ready. But I think I really like how these two look together. Um, and I think it'll be really beautiful. So these are my two center circles. And now what we'll jump, do is jump in, grab some of the freezer paper, and we'll make those templates. They come together really easy, I think. I think you'll be pretty surprised about how easy it is to make them. Okay, so let's make our template. So you'll want your iron on for this. Um, so keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off some of the freezer paper. Get this off. And there's a side of it that's kind of shiny and a side that is not. You're going to want to trace on the side that is not because the shiny side is what is going to help kind of glue um, this all together. So what I'm going to do is in my pattern book, it has the, um, the circle to trace. Now, if you don't feel comfortable circling or tracing this circle, you could also find something about the size of the circle you need. This one, this is a little bit too big for it, but um, I am going to trace, I'm, I am going to cut my circles bigger than this circle because I need um, some seam allowance to turn my fabric to get um, the raw edges hidden. So let me show you what I mean on some other circles that I made. So I did these and see how I have my edge turned in. So these are down to about the size of this circle here, but I traced them larger to hide the raw edge. So I made two different template sizes. One, the exact size of the circle that I'm using for the centers. And you'll need this template because that is going to be the size that you pull your edges into. But if you want a template that is bigger to actually use to cut out your circle, um, you can make a larger one as well, or you can just eyeball that larger circle. 
Um, so this is how I just um, trace this template circle size that I actually need. Um, I just use a permanent marker and I'm just gonna trace around it. It is much easier if you have a circle to trace like a cup or something like that that is the exact size if you wanna get a perfect circle, but this works as well. And I really like not having to pay for a whole bunch of extra stuff, if you know what I mean. So what I'm gonna do, cause you're gonna want at least four layers. If you get more, that's fine. I'm gonna fold this around, making sure I can still see the circle I need to trace. So there we go. And you are going to either wanna cut off the edge that still has some plastic, cause you don't wanna iron, you don't wanna iron that, or you can just, you know, tuck it down and, and keep it there. But uh, make sure none of the plastic is visible on either side you can cut some of the edges off because you don't want to iron this onto your um whatever mat you're using and you don't want it to get on your iron you could also put down like a cutting mat or some parchment paper or something so we're just gonna iron this you don't have to iron it too too long but you just want to get all of those layers to stick together um, you need may need to do both sides but there we go. And if you don't let it cool, um, you won't feel that it's firm back up. You need it all to cool back down. So once you get it ironed, I find that then it's easier to cut out the template after you've let it cool and it just takes seconds. Um, but see, I can still see that line there to cut it out. and you get your nice little circle template. And like I said, you could make the larger one if you want. You see how much larger it is. It's perfect amount for a seam allowance, um, but you really only need one and then just cut around your fabric, leaving your seam allowance or draw a line around it. But there we go. So we have the template made. So now let's look at getting our circles ready, our fabric circles. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at method one for creating our center circle and hiding the raw edges. So what you're going to need is one of your templates. You're gonna need needle and thread, and you're gonna need some, um, some sort of marking tool, and you're gonna need some, um, fabric scissors. So first I'm just going to draw a rough line, giving myself some seam allowance around this circle. Okay. Then I'm going to cut out the circle. And remember, we're going to need to do um, 12 circles. So I'm using two colors, so I'm gonna be making six circles in each color, the yellow and the orange. Okay, so we have our circle cut. And now we're gonna take our template and we are going to sketch around the outside of it, but I'm going to leave just the slightest little area between the template and where I'm marking my line. So I'm not going right on it, just directly next to it. Um, and this is just gonna allow my thread to do its work. <laughs> this would probably be easier to trace on a harder surface rather than my wool mat. Okay, so you can see the line pretty good. So I have just a little knot tied in one end of my thread and on the wrong side of it, I'm just gonna start doing a long base stitch 
around that line that I marked. So just gonna go all the way around. And I do already have some starch in this paper, so you, in this um, fabric, so you can see it's kind of already crimping up on me and holding that. It's kind of holding those lines, but we'll iron it all out so it'll be fine. So I'm just gonna keep going around this and it doesn't take too long because these are fairly small little circles. Okay. So you can take your needle off. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the container so I don't lose it on the table here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my template and put it in the middle of what I just completed and kind of pull thread through and it'll pull all of those raw edges in. And then if you just missed with some starch, you can iron this down nice and easy. And you can see the thread is kind of pulled to the back, so you won't need to pull it out or anything. It'll just help hold everything in place for you later. So I'm just gonna snip off the extra thread after I get this all nice and pressed. Make sure everything's pulled through how I want it. Make sure it looks good on both sides. Just a little mist. Get nice crisp edges. All right, let me cut off that excess thread. Okay, and then I can just pop out my template to use again. Just make sure everything's good and pressed because you don't want it to come undone. And now you have all your raw edges tucked inside so that when you stitch around the circle, you don't have to worry about anything fraying later. Now, if you wanted to just leave raw edges, maybe this isn't a quilt that you're making that will ever, um, you know, need to be washed or washed very infrequently like a wall hanging, then just trace directly around the circle and cut it out. Um, and you would just applique it on that way. But I do have one more way that you can do this if you're like, I do not want to have to um, use a needle and thread to do all the edges. So um, let me show you method number two for hiding your raw edges. So where did I put my pencil? So basically you're gonna start with the same thing. You're gonna trace around the template leaving some seam allowance. Okay, and then just cut it out. Okay. All right, so now just lay your template. Actually, I'm gonna miss this first. So just lay your template in the center and then just slowly start using your fingers to pull the fabric over on the template. So 
And that was um, some spray starch that I used, so keep that in mind. So I'm just going to slowly pull the fabric onto the template and iron around bringing the seam allowance over to the center. And keep in mind that I am laying the template on the wrong side of the fabric. So this um, method works really well too, but I will say that um, if you are worried about your fingers getting burned from the iron, the other method I showed with the thread is much easier to avoid getting burns. And the thread in the other method also helps hold everything in place so you don't have to worry as much about um, your edges turning out. If you are using a heavy starch, you should be fine, but just keep that in mind. Okay, well, let's give it one more press to make sure we have some crisp edges there. And then we'll pop the template out to use on the rest of the circles that we're making. So give it one more press. Make sure everything's in place. And once it dries, you, your raw edges should keep on the inside pretty well. Um, but definitely the one that has the thread is going to hold them in, I think, a little bit better. But they still turn out really good. One might be easier for you than the other, but there you go. There are two methods. So let's work through make, cutting and turning all the rest of the circles. All right, so here are the finished center circles and I have them set in place so I can just make sure I like how everything looks. And I am so excited to finish up this quilt. So next Wednesday, what we will be doing is um, exploring different ways that we can attach the Dresden circle and the center circle to our background to get it ready for um, stitching in place. So be sure to tune back in next Wednesday to finish up our Dresden square blocks. And then we will decide on some sashing and some borders and the videos to follow. So let me know in the comments what you think of the color choices that I made. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.